Hi, and welcome to another Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's episode, I meet a painter who actually went to school for painting, which that's not the weird part. The weird part is, is then they stopped for many, many years and just recently got back into painting again. And so much so that they just hit the ground running. They started painting, sending their stuff out to try and get into galleries. They reached out to me to be on the podcast, which, you know, hey, so that's, uh, that's, they're doing all kinds of stuff. They started an Instagram account. They were inspired by a uh, person that they knew in the art world uh, in those prior years when they were, you know, in college and doing stuff. And uh, they just, they just wanted to get back out into the world. And it's an interesting story. And right away, I learned something that I did not know about the person in the very first few seconds of this interview. So here it is starting right now. My name is uh, Joseph Iorio. I'm a uh, I'm a painter, abstract painter, um, and um, actually also a uh, union iron worker. Okay, so. I did not know that about you. Uh, truthfully, uh, looking you up, I only know you from Instagram. So it was yeah. I I I actually this is this is new for me too. So I'm this is going to be enjoyable, and that's already interesting. Now, first of all, where are you located? Uh, I'm in Fairhaven, New Jersey. That's okay. like. Uh, it's about 50, 50 miles outside of New York City uh, on the, the New Jersey coast. Okay. And how long? So now you're saying you, you're a union worker, you said. Yeah, I'm an, I'm, I, I work um, in the Iron Workers Union in New York City. Okay. What is that? So I know what that means by title, but like, what does it actually entail? I've never actually spoken to an iron worker before, so this is kind of fascinating. Um, I work on bridges and... Um, Really? Bridges and, and yeah, and skyscrapers in, in New York City. No, come on. So you, wait, okay. All right, first of all, I hate heights. And uh, I mean, yeah. we'll talk about your art, but I mean, come on, this is this is fun for me. All right. <laughs> so like you are one of the people that just like goes up, like it's one of those things where you just don't even think about it. You're just, you're one of those guys walking around like really high up and it's just like, do, 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 right? Yeah, that, that's that's my job. Good yep. Lord, how do you get into something like that? This is crazy. I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's it was kind of by accident. I actually started doing it when I was seventeen years old as wow. a summer job. Um, my father got me in to do it just as a summer job. Um, I went to college while I was going to college. I was doing it in the summers. Um, graduated from college and decided to just do it till I figure out what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. Went back to school in New York city, went to arts, went to uh, get my MFA at school of visual arts. Um, while I was getting my MFA full time, I was still iron working like three days a week. Um, got my MFA. Uh -huh. <laughs> went back to iron working. Okay. So here I am now 47. So I've been doing it for quite some time, man. And then when you went to school, did each time you go to school, was that for art? No. Nope. Okay. I went to, uh, so anyway, I went to Lafayette college in, uh, Easton PA. Um, it's a small liberal arts school. Um, and I studied English literature there. Okay. So yeah, I didn't take my first, uh, art slash painting class till my junior year of Lafayette of, a uh, college. Had you so, ever done painting before that? Nope. Nothing. I mean, it was like, uh, it was one of those things like growing up, I couldn't color in the lines, like, you know, so like in art class in grammar school and stuff like, oh, you're not a good artist mm -hmm. because like I wasn't doing, you know, I wasn't rendering. I wasn't like really great at drawing. I wasn't coloring in the lines. So like in my mind, I wasn't a good artist. So it wasn't something I really even thought about. Well, then what made you pursue it? <laughs> None of this. So well, here's, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this. this, is, this it, it gets interesting. Yeah. So anyway, I took, I was an English lit, lit major. Um, I needed a class. I needed three credits over over a break, my junior year, over Christmas break. Okay. And I wanted I wanted an easy class that I didn't have much work in. So I'm like, I'll just take an art class. So yeah. I took a painting class. Um, teacher was Jim Toya, an artist. Um, anyway, I took the class. We started in the class. Right in the beginning of the class, we took a trip to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, right? And walking through there, I saw a Philip Guston painting. I think it was, uh, I think it was L Ladders, I think it was. Okay. Um, one of his, like, you know, like cartoony, like, you know, 
like seeing that for the first time being like, wait, what is that? Wait a second. That's art. That counts as art. I'm mm-hmm. like, I was, I was blown away. So anyway, I saw that I was totally inspired by it. Our, you know, our, our assignment when we went back to class was to paint something, try to paint something that we were inspired by. So I painted like my version of a Philip Gustin painting and my teacher, Jim Toya absolutely loved it. Hmm. And it kind of like took off from there. I'm like, wait, maybe, maybe I can do this. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I made a couple more pennies in that class. Um, you know, he, he was the first person, he gave me the confidence to be an artist. Like he was like, you know, you're, you have like a natural talent for like, uh, you have, um, you're really good with colors. Like you like really, you're a natural painter. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I ended up taking, I think two more classes at Lafayette, stayed in touch with Jim, continued to paint a little bit. Um, and ended up taking some continuing education classes at school of visual arts after I graduated from Lafayette, just to, just cause I liked it. I wanted to see what I could do with it. Yeah. Um, ended up, I decided I wanted to go, I wanted to go back to school for it. So I applied to a few uh, MFA programs, got into the school of visual arts MFA program. Um, and yeah, I was there for two years full time. I mean, that was like, totally immersive program. I mean, you got a studio. It was like, yeah, here I was like somebody who had never, never studied, never, like never had a, never had a drawing class in my life, never anything. I'm really just painted based on like, you know, what I thought was how you paint. Okay. And that's, you know, and that's, yeah, <laughs> that's how, that's how it happened. And, and you know what? Like, I feel like it, like, I feel like I was coming from a totally, and I still do feel like I'm coming from a, like a, a different place than a lot of other artists. I mean, not having that, like, you know, and not, I'm not saying every artist has that like BFA and whatever else and like all the drawing classes, but I feel like, you know, having that start really kind of gives me like my own voice, like right from the start, not trying to find it later. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm developing it, Yeah, but I def I see it as an advantage. Sometimes honestly. it's, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of artists, or not a lot. I've seen uh, a, a few artists that have been the same way where they started really late. And I, I want to say from my own observation, it seems like it's because playing catch up on the artists that have been doing it forever makes you accelerate more because you want to get to where they are. It's not really competition. It's like, Oh, I want that. Like even that painting you saw, you're like, you went and you were like trying to do your version of that painting. Cause you're like, I liked that. I want to recreate it. Whereas, yeah. you know, other people that might be a study and you were like, no, that's, that's great. How do I do that? You know? And that's what I mean is like you skip, you did all this, you did many steps in one just to go like, let's see if that works. You know, uh, instead of it being just a study. And I've seen other artists or spoke to other artists that are that same way. And that's fascinating. And also the fact that you started out with it just being a, an extracurricular, I will say, all right, I'm going to give a a little bit of uh, like, I learned, you know, that I shouldn't think this way later on in life. But like when I was in high school, I was taking all the art classes to the point my senior year, they were making up art classes for me because there weren't other ones for me to take, you know, like half my day was that. And I'd see people come in and they'd be taking art and I'd be like, Oh, you're just here for a credit because you have to, you think it's easy. (laughs) Right. And then move forward to like a lot of those people that took those classes, they're like running their own creative crafting business and all this kind of stuff. And me, you know, I'm doing a podcast in my apartment. So anyway, (laughs) success is just like, you know, do what you want to do. And yeah. yeah. And that's what you did. And you were like, I was taking this other thing and you saw the art and then all of a sudden it just moved you. And that's awesome. Yeah. And you actually went, so you said you went to a different school to actually study the, the bachelor's degree. No, no, the bachelor's degree. I, I mean, I, 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 we, well, I finished it at Lafayette. I finished, I got oh, Okay. My, you my, did. My, I thought you said ba- you applied to get it somewhere else, but you were saying you applied no. to get it there. Yeah, no, no, I got, I got my, I got my, my bachelor's in uh, English lit from Lafayette, but then I got my master's in fine arts from, from school of visual arts Okay, in, in New York city. All right. So. All right. And then, uh, so now you've been painting, you've been, uh, you know, doing these things. Uh, how did you actually find your style? How did you actually, you know, how would you explain your work? <laughs> how would I explain it? Um, well, I would say it's like geometric, geometric, 
abstract expressionism. Kind okay. Of. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, I think there's definitely like a, like a dichotomy. I mean, I think there's like like definitely some like heavy like you know geometric like hard lines like. Uh, but at the same time, um, there's like definitely some very expressive stuff going on. I mean, my paintings for me, like it's like it basically it's a record of like my dialogue of 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 like the conversation I have with the painting, basically. OK. Um, so, I mean, let's, I might as well go into process quickly now, too, anyway. I mean, it's like I I start like. Um, I sometimes, I sometimes I usually start with like a loose plan with the painting. Okay. And, and as I progress and I start putting paint is, on the painting and, is and this making all, marks. This all starts on canvas. You're saying you don't like do a sketch of it. You do it on the canvas. I, I do some sketching. Okay. Like I don't, I don't usually do like, okay, this is the sketch for this painting. I, I try to sketch every day. Yeah. Um, but I usually don't say this is, this is, the sketch for this painting it's just like i'll sometimes like as i'm like starting a painting i'll go through my sketchbook and be like okay i kind of like this i like this and maybe like start thinking about stuff like that um but usually what i do is i start so i'll, I'll tell you exactly what i do I, I, okay first off i work on many paintings at once i can't work on one at a time i mean if i work at one at a time i feel like i put too much pressure on that painting Oh yeah. I need, I need paintings like in like, in like various stages. Um, so I always need to be starting a painting. I always I'm, need I'm sorry. Like I'm smiling. It's because I work on like five different things a day and I'm just like, Oh, finally someone else who does that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like, if, I find if I try to work on one thing, like if I'm like at, at, at the point in a painting where like, it's like, I feel like it's almost done. I can't just walk into the studio and, and like, like from not painting, and expect to get in that mindset where I could like finish that or like move forward with it. Okay. I kind of, I need to get in there and like gesso something, you know, stretch some canvas, maybe like, you know, paint like a feet, a color field, you know, something that I know. And then like all of a sudden I'll know what to, what to do on that. Like once I'm in that mode, mm -hmm. I can't, you know, yeah, it's, it's, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much how I work. Um, just recently, I used to never like draw on the canvas at all. Recently, I've been like actually starting to draw a little bit um, on the canvas, like sometimes like like some 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 grids, some structure to start. Okay. Um, sometimes some shapes and like filling in the lines. So I don't know if I f I might feel like I feel like I'm kind of like maybe moving a little bit away from the expressionism a little bit and a little bit more towards like harder lines ge harder line geometry. Okay. Kind of feeling that 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 pull a little bit. Yeah. Um do you know why that might be? Or you're just kind of seeing I mean, it in the work? I'm seeing it in the work. I mean, I, I when I look at work like I really like like geometric ex ex abstraction like um I mean, might have some, I mean, I'm sure there's something to do with my, with my job. I mean, like my, my job oh, yeah. is like, like hard line geometry, like in space, like, you know, like beams being like picked up in the air. Like I'm always constantly looking at that, like that spatially, like against other stuff in the sky. And like that totally informs my work like, big time. Okay. So like, maybe. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Can I, <laughs> can I interrupt just for one second? Cause I had the dumbest thought. Uh, so Am, I feel like I'm talking to the first person I've ever known that like you probably know how to use like a forklift and a crane and stuff like that. <laughs> and for some yeah, reason, well, I was just like, wait, he knows how to operate big trucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I actually, we, that, that's like a different union though. That, that's the, the operators actually operate the equipment oh. that picks the stuff. We actually okay. just, we set, we set it, we put it in place, we bolt it, we weld it. Okay. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to go yeah. back to <laughs> back to Tumbo, but I was like, I was like, I don't, I've never known anybody that runs machinery. Okay, anyway, back to so we were talking about the geometry. I apologize. Yeah, <laughs> um, no problem. But that makes sense though, and um, knowing now when we first uh, started this interview that you do that, I kind of thought that when, especially looking at some of the work that I've that I've seen you do recently, and uh, yeah. I, I kind of saw that, and there are always not always but there are um hints of they're just like things that now i want to say are piping uh going yeah. across the screen like there are things that are just kind of and i thought they were 
Well, no, they still could be frames for different sections, but and not to, I mean, I'm just saying I saw what I saw. I don't know what you're going for because they're, they're your creations, but so you're saying it's kind of evolving into that though, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't necessarily know what I'm going for either. Oh no. And I'm not saying you should. Yeah. And that's the beauty. Even when I was saying, do you sketch them out? I know when you get there as someone who creates things, it's like, when you get there, it's like, Oh, what if I did this? And you just start ignoring what, you know, it's all just a place to start from. Yeah. So no, I I don't expect, you know, exactly how it's going to be when it ends. it's, It's all a process. So listen, I, before I get even like that much further into this, like, yeah. uh, there's like another another like big caveat that I definitely need to bring up right now is like until like three or four months ago, I hadn't painted in 18 years. So, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought it looked like your stuff was relatively recent from what I saw, and yeah, like I said yeah, so. when we started, uh, I I was only able to find really very little about you. Uh, yeah. So except from what I know on Instagram. So uh, how did this? Tell me about that. Why, why is that? So, so I, I graduated from the MFA program at SVA in 2003. I had a studio in Red Hook, Brooklyn for two, like two more years after that. Okay. So I painted, I painted until about 2005. And then it wasn't like a plan, like I'm not painting anymore. It's just like, you know, life happened basically. Got married, had kids, um, was working on my house and different things like that. And it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. So it was something that I probably felt guilty about and thought about like almost probably daily for 18 years. All right. But I just, I just didn't, just didn't do it. Okay. Um, And what you were just not doing anything in that realm. You're saying you weren't like drawing or like secretly, like maybe there was one thing you were working on. You were just like, I, you just stopped. I stopped. I was, I was sketching every once in a while. Um, but nothing, nothing really, uh, consistent. Okay. And so, what sparked it? Um, well, like I said, it, it's, it's been, it's been on my mind. It's been on my mind. And it's like, I don't know if you've taken a break from your art at all in your life, but like, it's oh, like yeah. when you're not doing it, it's like in your mind, when you're not doing it, it feels like it's the hardest thing in the world. Mm-hmm like to get back into it, at least, at least it, it is, that's the way it felt for me. Um, but then like, once you're doing it, it's like, wow, this is easy. I mean, I can, I, I could do this all the time. Like it's, 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 I mean, relatively how, easily, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not easy, but it, um, so anyway, what sparked it is, is I'm actually, there was, there was a couple things. Um, I'm part of this like accountability group called go abundance. Basically, it's like a group where we like we strive. You strive to be the best version of yourself. So, like every every quarter, you're like writing out your goals. Like you are, you know. I, I meet with like there's a smaller week within that group. There's a small. I meet with like a smaller group of four guys, like like once a week, you know, via Zoom. They're from all over the country. Okay. Um, basically, you talk about you know how you gonna how are you gonna like it, you know what do you want to get out of life like how are you gonna how are you gonna improve yourself like what are you gonna do to become the best version of yourself and one of my goals that kept coming up is like this is the painting thing and my art kept coming up, kept coming up. Finally, these guys were like, you know, what the hell are you doing? Like it's time. So basically I just, I started making a couple of small, quick paintings. They're like, you're going to just like put them up on Etsy. So I just, that's not really what I want my end game to be, but I'm like, I just need to do something. So I made some quick paintings, yeah. put them up on Etsy. They didn't sell on Etsy, but like that got me going. Um, so that, that, that got me going. And then, um, once I got rolling, I start, you know, I went out, I, I, I got some canvas. I started, I got some, my paint skits at my studio in my basement. Um, and then there was, uh, I decided it was time to, I needed to go into New York to check out some shows at some galleries. So turned out my thesis advisor, uh, Jake Berto was having a show he's since he died in 2013 it's a really like 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 pretty big time artist painter yeah um he was having a huge show at, at the benny cunningham gallery and i i had no idea but i saw that i went into the show saw the show and like was like absolutely blown away um i talked to the owner betty cunningham she gave me a book um that's was about jake it's called jake Berto and the the primacy of art written by ed breslin 
it was basically um ed was a friend of jake's who the book was written about basically spending like the last six months of jake's life you know um with jake like going to his studio interviewing him. jake had cancer like he knew he was dying going to his studio interviewing him talking about his work i read this book uh saw his show and it was like it was like a tap on the shoulder basically from him like you know joe what the hell are you doing it was okay. just like you know let's get back going here um it was like totally inspiring it just like got me like totally fired up and you know got me got me rolling basically wow so okay. yeah it, it was the, the timing of that was just like absolutely impeccable and the, the book is is awesome i mean like i literally hadn't spoken to him since since 2005 um i was so out of the art world i didn't even know that he had died like it was just like there was like crazy emotions I was feeling like I was feeling guilty for like losing, losing touch with them, like feeling like, you know, I, 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 I that like I missed out, but then like, you know, feeling grateful that I was able to like see his show, read this book and kind of like, you know, have some closure with him, but also, mm -hmm. um, you know, inspire my own work, like where I really wanted to be going. Like it's, it was, it, it was actually, it was awesome. That whole, that whole situation was great the way it worked out. Wow. So um, you started out then, or you had done Etsy before that. Now, after having this experience, like what was your, what was your game plan? What did you do? Where did you actually start putting work out? Uh, Instagram. And, and okay. like, you know, and I, and I just, um, this time around too, like, it's like, I, I've been like very just like, I'm just putting myself out there. Like the way I did with you, like okay. the way, like I reached, I, I, I applied to an open call for a gallery. Like I'm going to be, I'm going to be in a group show at the end, oh. of, a, end of May. Like where it's at? like in, in Queens, okay. in, uh, in New York. It's uh it's called uh level gallery. I'll, I'll, I can give that stuff at the end if you want the end. Yeah, sure. I'm going to, I'm actually going to be in a group show there in May. And they also want me to want me to have a solo show there uh, beginning of next year. Oh, so, well, yeah. Nice. Cr crazy. Like yeah. I've just been putting my, I've been putting myself out there making work and, um, you know, stuff's been aligning for me. So okay. it's just like, I, I, I have this, like when I was like getting out of art school and, you know, painting, and it was like that whole end of it. Like I was so shitty at it. Like I, I just was not good right. at like putting myself out there marketing. Like I was just like, you know, somebody's going to come and knock at my door and that's how I'm going to, you know, get my big break. Yeah. Now I'm a lot, you know, 20 years older. It's just like, uh, I have nothing to lose. Well, and, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I was going to ask. Like, what, it, what do you do now? Cause that's hard to like all of a sudden just start putting yourself out there. Like, where are you researching? How are you finding people? I'll tell you right now, Instagram is like, is unbelievable. And okay. that was not around when I was, when I was younger. Like right. it's, it's, I've just been trying to, so basically what I've been doing, cause I don't, I'm, I'm, I was so out of the art world. Like I don't, I don't, I don't even know anybody really any, anymore. You know, it's like right. the kids I went to school with, a lot of them aren't making art. Like, it's just like, you know how it goes. Like you, you, you're out of it for, for, for that long. I mean, yeah. it's like, I'm starting over fresh. So basically I just started trying to find, uh, I went to, what helped a lot is I, I knew, so I knew like some galleries that I knew that there's like a whole, like in New York city, there's like a, a few areas, neighborhoods where like, you know, the, like the top galleries are really like uh Chelsea and then like Tribeca. So I went and checked out some galleries. Some of them are still around from what, you know, the ones that I liked. Okay. Um, so I went and checked some out. Um, saw some artists there that I liked. I knew a couple of them. Some I didn't. Um, and then, you know, started like following the people that I knew I liked and then just like try to like, you know, basically try to see who, who they were following, like try to get some of this, you know, and just try to go that way and, and then start seeing basically just finding work that I liked that was being done in New York city that was showing at, at, at decent galleries and like start following them and just like trying to like build on that, you know? Okay. So, and so this is going to be the first time you've actually shown your work publicly since way back when yeah yeah exactly okay <laughs> how are you preparing well, for that <laughs> i mean it's it, i'm good to go it's it's just it's just it, this this show is just three paintings i have them ready to go i actually just finished the third one that i want to put in yesterday so um i paint in oils so oh you, you know, do they're, dry, they're, they're they're drying right now so okay at least two of them are still drying one of them is dry 
So I need to have it to them. I think uh, it's the it's May twenty first. So I need to have it to them like like a week or week before that. So I should be good to go. Um, even if I, I'm going to drive it there myself, even if I have to like kind of keep them separate, you know. Right. And then and then uh, and the the solo show. I've just been like you know I've just been painting painting like a maniac. Like you know just I got a uh, I got a bunch of paintings. I have like maybe like five paintings, five or six, maybe seven paintings done right now. Okay. And I got a bunch bunch in the works and really just having that motivation of having to get ready for a show is like some of the best motivation there is to keep making art, you know? Okay. So the paintings that you're putting out are really like this, is this the amount of work that you have or do you have other ones that you've done before? Like how, how big is the collection that you have right now? Um, yeah, I mean the ones I have on Instagram are all my new ones. Okay. I have, I probably have like, like, like 20 other ones from art school that, all right. that are 18 years old. Okay. But I want to show my new stuff. I don't want oh, yeah. to show no, them. absolutely. Show no, 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 no. That's what I was curious about is like, how much is the new stuff? How much is the old stuff um, uh, from uh, viewing it online? That's the one thing about Instagram is sometimes people will, uh, like even if they post the same painting over, but they do it from like, here's a different section of it. I don't know if I'm looking at a new painting or not. So that's why I'm yeah. just like, how many paintings do you actually have? I wasn't sure. Well, you know, you know what? I think there's actually there's two of them on there that are that are old. Um, okay. But other than that, everything else is every, everything else is new to 2023. Okay. But, so as I finish a painting, I try to get it up there. All right. And in the, uh, as you go along, what are your plans for like storing these things? Or are you planning on are you staying in your home studio? Or are you planning on getting a studio? Just this is big picture stuff. This isn't like you have to do it now. But I'm curious. Uh, I'm staying in my home studio. Okay. I mean, it's. I got too much going on, like with work and the kids and stuff. Like I, I, I really can't spend time traveling to a studio right, right. now. If I expect to, like, I'm, like I'm sneaking it. Like the weekends, I'm able to get some time together. But like during the week right now, like after work, like I'm sneaking in like an hour or two here. Or That's there true. When I can, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, like you come home and now I'm going to go somewhere else, and it's way over there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so makes sense. I mean, I got. I think I'm at my max with what my wife will allow to be hanging around the house. I have like uh, one, two, three, four. I think I have like five hanging in the house right now. Okay. Um, you know, so storage wise, I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll keep them in the basement for now. I mean, yeah, that's, that's where my studio is set up, but. All right. And as, so as someone who jumped, I, I want to say you jumped feet first into going back into being an artist and getting your work out there. Like, what have you learned so far that you would even, like something, if someone else who's been thinking of, uh, like wanting to start again, what would, I mean, what's, what are some tips or what have you learned from just doing that? Or what would you say to those people? Like if you met someone that told you that? Um, well, first off, I would, I would say start, start making some work. Yeah. Um, get, get to some galleries, check out, check out, you know, it's, it's especially if you're, you know, just get to an area where, where, where there's some galleries, find some galleries that you like and just like spend some time in Instagram. You can find out so much right. on Instagram, especially like if you're willing to like, you know, just, just keep looking and like find somebody you like and see, and, you know, just kind of play that game where like, you see, you know, see who they like, see, and, and you can just start finding stuff, Yeah, you know, and then put yourself out there a hundred percent. Like, I mean, I'm sure some people ignored me and like, it's just like, I've been like, you know, I've been messaging like artists I like, um, so I'm trying to kind of like, you know, get to know some artists too. And just try to like, you know, I want to get, I want to start going to some openings of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and just kind of just, you know, start talking to people and just put a hundred percent, put yourself out there because they're not going to come knocking for sure. So, I, yeah. And I'll agree with that. It's uh, like when I started this, this podcast, it was just kind of like, I'd go to places and go, Oh, that'd be neat to talk to people about how they make it. Now I go and I'm like, Hey, you know, that's that person. And that's, you know, walking in and actually knowing the community or at least uh, being familiar with the community. It's kind of, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a great thing to achieve. And uh, yeah, I can, I can agree with you on that one for sure. Uh, do you have any, uh, plans on a website or a cart at all yes. for your stuff? Okay. I, I actually have a web. So I'm working with a developer, uh, been with, it should probably be ready. I'd say that my website in like a week or two. Um, nice. 
and it's been it's mostly just for a portfolio i thought about like trying to do whether you want to have a store there too i think i think a portfolio for now and if i need to get a store we could um but yeah, that's that, that's in the works. That's uh, that's something I, I definitely realize I, I definitely need. For okay, sure. and you did so. You have somebody that's making that for you. Yep, yep. That's uh, yeah. He has he has all the info. Like he's he's been working at it probably for like the last month. Oh, so. nice. Okay. Did you buy the domain already? Oh yeah. Uh, yep. yep. Okay, so domain. you can actually say the domain, and nobody can go in and swoop it up. So what would the domain be when it's ready? Uh, Joseph Iorio art.com. Okay. And also how many times in your life? And this is just because when I was looking you up, I kept wanting to type in an L because the I looks like a lowercase L. How, <laughs> yeah. many, how many times has that happened to you forever? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like 90% of the time. It's like, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how much it happens. <laughs> it's, you know, like it's, it's yeah, it's a lowercase L and it's like your first. Yeah, it's, it's so many times I did that. It's and then I had to remind myself just by looking at it. It's like, no, that's an I. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like a family joke. It happens all the time. Oh. And um, so now getting back into it as well, I want to ask another question that's kind of like, uh, what do you wish was easier? <laughs> like you're freshly going through the struggles of like putting the word out there and contacting people. Is there anything you, you're like, yeah, uh, if, if only this, or I didn't have to do this, or if I could have this done automatically or, you know, stupid things. Like one of my biggest problems is, um, bios writing bios or like what I say yeah. to people, you know, like uh, the, when I reach out to people, like I actually, <laughs> one person that I've interviewed on the podcast suggested an artist, then told the artist that I was going to contact them and then told me that they contacted him. So I didn't have to do the whole introduce myself and what I do. So I can just go, yeah. Hey, so you already know everything you want to be on the show. You know, like that part was easy for me. So I guess for me, it's the reaching out to people, but what would you say you wish was a lot easier? Um, maybe like, maybe writing about your art. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going through that, like right now, like with my, with building the website and like, I needed to like, um, I need to like provide like a 50 word bio for this group show. I'm like, how do you like write a bio in 50 words? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's amazing. You- <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it, because you made it. And yeah. you know what the expression is of it, but then when you have to write it down, it's just like, well, how do I say it? Yeah, but yet you know what it's about. You know what inspired it. Yeah. <laughs> so and how- the thing is, it's always it's always changing too. I swear, like, I feel like I could like write like a by like write what my art's about. Like, I just feel like it's evolving. It evolves fast. I mean, it's just like, and maybe it's because I haven't done it in eighteen years, but I feel like that's the way it always is for me. Like, uh-huh. if, I, if I think back. Um, it's just like, it's all about the process, right? It's a record of the process and the process is just informing me what to do next, basically. Yeah. So it's like, I guess you, I guess I should just write that. You know? <laughs> right. And I agree with you. It's, I hate doing that part, writing a, yeah, writing a whole description and you have to do it every time. I don't know. Um, but I do like that you have a show coming up. That's really cool. Um, and uh, again, where did you say that show was? It's. Level Gallery. It's on uh, 1639 Center Street in uh, Ridgewood, Queens. All right. It's, it opens. It opens on uh, May 21st. It's a group show. Okay. Yes. And this show should be out before then, so that will that that part will be able to leave in. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> and now, speaking of things like that, like in the future, what are some plans or actual shows or like things you just like to do in the future that you might want to tell people about today? Uh things I would like to do. I mean, I want to, I want to show my art. I want to, I want to show it as much as possible. So yeah. I would like to get, I would like to get in some more group shows for sure. Okay. Um, I want, I want to get it out there. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not messing it up this time. I feel like I dropped the ball last time. Last time I was, I was getting serious with it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm getting it done this time. I'm going to get serious. I'm, I want to, I mean, this is, this is what I love to do. I mean, and it's like, I can't believe that I hadn't done this for 18 years. I mean, it's like now that I'm back in the studio, it's just like, this is like really, this is like what I'm looking for in my life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Any big projects you're working on right now? Uh, like, uh, or sort of, let me say themes that you're working on or like any, you know, things like that, or, uh, just kind of concentrating on the gallery right now. Just concentrating on the gallery. I mean, I'm, 
those paintings are done. They're just, they're drying. Okay. Got, okay. Right now, right now in the studio, I have, uh, one, two, three, four, I have five paintings I'm working around right uh, downstairs right now. So okay. I got one, I got one that's getting pretty close to being done. One that just has a little, has like a color field basically on the whole thing. I'm not sure what I'm doing on it yet. And I got like three that I'm, that are just gessoed up, ready to roll. All right. And if people wanted to check out your work, where would you suggest that they go look at it? Instagram is, is definitely the best spot for sure. And that's, um, at Iorio Joseph, okay. I O R I O J O S E P H. Yes. Not an L an I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, and ve very soon the website, Joseph art.com. Great. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad you reached out. Yeah, man. It's awesome. Thank you so much.